I was actually born in this small town. My dad has been in the machining industry literally his pretty much his entire life. I think he went to trade school at 16 and so his entire life he's done the same thing and so I grew up with it. He asked me a long time ago, like when I was a teenager, if I wanted to shop, and I, I wasn't interested. I, I was like, I'm going to go to college, I'm going to be an engineer. There was no way I was turning handles my entire life. I just was, was not interested one bit. Right before my second year of college, we, we got our first CNC machines and, um, and fell in love with it. But I went to school, finished my degree, we'd come home in the summers and work, and um, my last semester we started building the shop that I'm in now, and when I, when I graduated, I came home and went to work. Before that, robots were, were you know, these yellow industrial components that, that had to be caged and they really weren't suited for a business like, like what we do. And uh, so it was kind of a, a pipe dream. And, and you know, seeing the UR and, and trying to get people to, to come to work and, and uh, or find skilled labor, like it, it was kind of a no-brainer. We went from making about a 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 parts at a time to um, about 45,000, 50,000 of these particular parts. We just did it piecemeal. Like I said, we started with one robot in front of one machine, then we had it tending two, and then it was three, so the program grew incrementally. Uh, it kind of started as a joke. My mom said, well, why don't you just, you know, this is always in the way, why don't you just mount the robot to the ceiling? And I, so I was like, mom, you're just being crazy, like, that's silly. And uh, I kind of slept on it and, and really thought about it a few times. I was like, wait, it's not a bad idea. We've learned about you know, communication stuff. That's the biggest one, is, is how to make the robot uh, talk to, to the, the CNC machines. Um, I guess, it, honestly, the, the biggest thing is now I know what I don't know. I knew absolutely nothing when we started other than like, you know, from what we've seen at trade shows and hey, you can make the robot pick something up here and put it there uh, to, you know, really what the capabilities are as far as, you know, controlling things with force. Um, and it's really the logic in it that, that, uh, that makes it a, a good product. The next thing we're going to do, that's going to be the robot on wheels that's going to kind of go service different jobs as we get them in and out. We're going to have it feed a machine and since we already have control over this one part, that particular part that's coming out of that machine gets put into a slot and gets pinned. So it'll build these assemblies as well as feeding a machine. I told you the, the anecdote about my, my mother and how the robot got to be on the ceiling. She hated the robot at first. She told me it was the worst thing that I was, I was being a, a bad business owner, that um, other people could be doing those jobs and that it was taken away from, you know, I could be feeding families. And uh, <laughs> her, her attitude has completely changed. I think now she sees that it's not quite as easy to get people to come to work and, and do these boring, mundane uh, jobs. Customers come in, um, salesmen come in. You know, you look like you're on the, on the, the cutting edge of technology. I, I think eventually it's just gonna be more common to have these things in, in factories and don't be afraid to do it. If you've, if you've got work to do, it will be able to do it. Mm -hmm.